We're about to look through this gap and weld the back side through it. Like a mirror weld. Bullet making, baby. Hey everybody, welcome back to Get Weld Soon. I'm pretty excited about this video because uh, this is a, a tough weld that bullet makers have to make sometimes. Uh, pie fitters too and, and all kinds of welders, but specifically this will be representing a, a boiler tube. One of my viewers uh, wanted to see me do a mirror weld. So appreciate that. <laughs> no, actually I'm, I'm happy to do it. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a mirror weld uh, in a boiler, but uh, sometimes we have to do that. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, there'll be tubes stacked on top of one another and there's no way to get on the back side to, to get over there and weld it. So you have to put a mirror back there and weld the back side with a mirror. Pretty intimidating for, <laughs> for most people, uh, but uh, sometimes we have to do it. So anyway, so I got this set up here to simulate, uh, to simulate a mirror weld in a boiler. And I got these on each side of it. To, usually, usually you can uh, pull tubes away from the tube you're working on you know to get your hands in there to, to, enough to weld it you know i've got it to where i can just uh i can just fit i can i can fit my hand back there uh enough to enough to weld it so anyway if you want to if you want to practice this at home this is a great way uh, to simulate uh, a mirror weld in the bullet there is a few things that you're going to need to make welds like this uh, if you want to learn you're going to need an end grinder and i like these little air end grinders they're small and you can fit them in tight places. Like I got a little brush on it right now. You can fit it back there to, to clean the back side of your weld. Obviously, you're not gonna fit a grinder. I'm not gonna fit a grinder in there with one of these welds. It's just not gonna happen. And these TIG gloves are my favorite. They are black stallion TIG gloves. Uh, they're super soft and they're they're a little thicker than a lot of your just leather TIG gloves. A little thicker, they insulate better. You know, if you gotta have your hands right up on the tube or pipe you're welding. Uh, so they're better for that. And they're super, super soft and comfortable. You can, you, you got maximum movement out of these gloves where a lot of the other leather gloves are really stiff. So I recommend these gloves, they're awesome. I'll leave a, I'll leave a link uh, for these tools uh, for one of these and, and, the, uh, and the gloves uh, in the description if you're interested. Let's get started. Okay, so on a weld like this, what you want to do, um, <clears throat> first of all, you want to tack it back as far as you can reach from this side uh, and see it easily. Tack it there and on each side. That's what I did. And I even to put a third tack here so it doesn't draw when I weld the back side. I'm going to weld the back side first. Uh, on a mirror weld, you don't want to do it all, you don't want to put the root in with a mirror. Uh, that would be way harder. Uh, you can just actually look through look through the front side and uh, fire up on one side and feed your wire from the other obviously um, what you want to do is fire up on that tack and when it when it starts to melt then you add a little bit of wire in there and go just a little bit through TIG rig and then pull your wire out and then keyhole it so you can see your tungsten you can see how far you you are from the tube uh, that way you, you know where you're at. And then you can feed a little more wire, go just a little bit, pull your wire out, and then keyhole it and look at that tungsten, make sure you're in the right position. And then feed a little more wire and you're just dabbing the whole way. That makes it a lot easier. Go about halfway and pull out, and then you do the other side. Do the other side the same way. Now, now it's tough to get your wire, obviously this wire would be too long, you know, if I got stuff here in my way in the back. So we're gonna pretend like this is real, you know. You can either cut cut your wire short so you can fit a little short piece of wire in there and just go a little bit at a time, or you can you can bend your wire uh, so that it would uh, you can do it kind of like this. Bend your wire so it'll fit in there, and you can just feed it like that. All right, so here we go. Looking through the front gap and welding the back gap. I took this shot here so you could see the position I'm in and how I'm, how I'm actually doing it. If you've never done this before, maybe it makes a little more sense now. Now reposition here. See how I've got my wire curved around and I actually stick it here. Hehehe. <laughs> <laughs> 
So here I reposition again and uh, you can see that I've got a short piece of straight wire now. Uh, that seemed to be a little bit easier for me. Um, of course, if you practice it enough, uh, the curved wire works just fine. But uh, anyway, it's been a long time since I've done this and I am very rusty. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I got through it. And I just continue to bring it on around and I get about halfway uh, and then I pull out. And then after that, I do the other side from the right side and then go to the middle and tie in in the center. So here is a shot through the root. This is actually what I can see. This is what you'll see when you're doing it. And uh, this is what the inside should look like. You gotta make sure those bevels are breaking down the top and the bottom. Uh, you don't wanna leave a bevel bevel edge in there. You wanna make sure it's consumed in the puddle. So this is a shot going left to right. I'll uh, pull out the wire a little bit and look at my tungsten real quick and then go a little bit more and pull my tungsten out. I just keep doing that so I can tell where my tungsten is. And here's a shot for me firing up on the other tack, going right to left this time, uh, and I meet in the middle, tie in in the middle. Now keep in mind, if, if you're just learning this or practicing, you're gonna get frustrated. You know, you're gonna stick your tungsten in the puddle, you're gonna stick your tungsten to the wire, uh, you're gonna stick everything you can think of. <laughs> and it, it does get frustrating. Uh, just stay patient. If you get mad and aggravated, just step away for a little while, take a little break, and then come back and practice more. All right, here's the next shot. Uh, when I fired up on the tack on the right side, uh, moving to the left. You see, I'll dab a little bit of wire, look at my tungsten. Actually, right here, I, st <laughs> I stuck my wire, and I was trying to get it undone, and it just uh, kind of made a little glob there. But luckily, I was able to fire back up and, uh, and consume it all. Uh, as you'll see here in just a second. There it goes right there. Uh, so I was able to consume it all uh, into the, the root there. And then I just continue. Uh, do a little keyhole and add a little wire. Keyhole. Uh, pulled out there for some reason. I can't remember. But anyway. And uh, just keep moving on here. Make sure you're breaking down the top and bottom bevels. And tie in really well. And, uh, I'm about to uh, tie into the center here. I'm almost done. And uh, Before you tie in there, you want to heat up that hole. Heat up all around it and then add a little wire like that right there. And then, bam, it all consumes and ties in together. So that's how you put the root in on a mirror well. So next week, we're going to actually bring out the mirror and fill it the rest of the way up and cap it. Stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Thank you.